What is up, New Beginnings Church? Happy Monday morning to you, and welcome to this devotion series through the Gospel of Luke. If you're joining me, go to Luke chapter 5. Read ahead if you want to. Incredible story. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake with Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the Word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. I just think that's clever. You know, I think that was common knowledge in their day, but if you've ever thought about this, Jesus did not have a microphone. So when you think about him going to the the Sermon on the Mount, and he was up in the hills, it's because you can cast your voice a certain way, you can project it, and it, it rings through and echoes through. Well, same thing's true off water. If you've ever been on a boat, notice you can hear other people on a different boat from pretty far away because of the way that uh, sound waves travel over water. And so Jesus, again, he's overwhelmed by the crowds. It's a bunch of them, but he's like, oh, I'll just push off uh, the water a little bit here, and uh, and my water's bouncing, you know, my, the water's bouncing my voice to these people. I can talk to more people this way. Real interesting. So when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. And Simon said, Master, we've worked all night hard and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. And when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. And when Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. I always thought that was funny, like they're in a boat. Where are you going to go? Like Jesus, he's like, get away from me, you know, go away from me. He's like, Dude, we're in a boat. At least take me back to shore first, right? So Simon Peter saw this, he falls at Jesus' knees, get away from me, I'm a sinful man. Uh, for he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said, well, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on the shore, left everything, and followed Jesus. Of course, if you read maybe a New King James Version, it says it a little bit different. It's from now on, um, you, you will you know, be a, a fisher of men. And I think that's amazing. You know, he says, follow me, and you're, beginning, you're going to become a fisher of men. I, I typically think most of us, when we come to Jesus and we hear that call to follow Jesus, we're normally dreading it. We're like, oh, I guess I got to give up this. Oh, I guess I got to quit doing that. I guess he's going to make me stop doing these things. And it's like, well, that's not actually what he said. Now, I think if you follow Jesus, that a lot of amazing things are going to happen in your life. You're going to lose your desire for a lot of things that actually are, are harmful to you. Like, I think God will do that work in you. But notice when he says, follow me. Um, to follow Jesus is to fish for people, and fishing for people is following Jesus. You cannot separate those two ideas. And so I just want you to consider the fact that like everywhere, every day, all around you are people who would love your encouragement, your prayers, your hope, your faith. They would love uh, for your kindness and generosity in their life. They would love to experience Jesus through you. And then again, if, if that opportunity presents itself for you to step in and say, hey, can I can I share with you my faith or can I tell you about Jesus or can I invite you to my church? You know, whatever it is. I want you to be thinking. We were talking about this just the other day in Growth Track. We were talking about how like, I've never met a single person that I, I didn't think needed Jesus in their life. I think every person I've ever come eyeball to eyeball with, this would be true. Their life would be better if Jesus was in it and Jesus would make them better at life. That's just true across the board. So I want people to have Jesus in their heart. And so I need to think like a fisherman. Now, I'm not a real fisherman, but I've been a few times and I've noticed that fishermen are unique. They're unique people. They have their, they're in their own world a little bit here, but I, I love how they are. They love it. That's the first thing I would tell you. If you want to be great at catching fish, you have to love it. Um, there is an adrenaline rush that when the fish gets on the line and you feel it and you get into this little wrestling match with a fish on the end of your line, it's just fun, but you got to love it. And so you got to love talking to people or love sharing your faith or love, invi- you just got to love people really is the main thing. If you love people, you're like, hey, I need to help you connect to Christ. That's the most important thing for you. Number two is this, they study fish. A real fisherman, like they're real, like they know water depth, water temperature, different places in the lake. I mean, they, they study and they know, at least the good ones do. 
They know. And so I'd say, hey, when you go talk to people, actually consider, like, where are they coming from? What's their background? Maybe what would be their questions or, or struggles with coming to faith? And how can I at least be prepared to answer some of the questions that they might have? Let me, let me do a little study. And then thirdly, I'm going to say something that's super obvious, is that fishermen go where the fish are. Fishermen just go to the fish. And so uh, at some point as a Christ follower, I don't want to have a life that ends up having this little bubble where it's just me and a handful of my Christian friends who think just like me and talk like me. Now, again, you do want people in your life that you're journeying through life with. They're your deep and close personal friends. That's wonderful. But you don't want to be limited to that, to that's the only people you hang out with. You want to intentionally go find people in places that, again, people that are away from God, that you can say, you know what, let me go and be a part of this group, be a part of this team, be a part of this whatever, so that I can go love people and show people the love of Christ through my actions and through my words. Can I get an amen? Let us, like this early story, let us follow Jesus by becoming fishers of people. Can I get an amen? Church, I love you so much. God bless you. You guys are amazing. I love you so much, and I will see you tomorrow.